Hello everyone and welcome to the video, and today we're going to be figuring out the age-old question, the one debated for many centuries, can you beat Liza P without any weapons? So today, I will be the one that finally figures that out. So I made my way into the Krat Central Station and started fighting this giant policeman. He was a mini boss, and at first my playthrough was only going to be Legion Arms, but I quickly found that that was going to be impossible because this guy would not die any other way. So I killed him with a firebomb and he turned into a Lego Star Wars character. After that, I made my way out into the real world. And just like that, the real game has started. And we also get a chance to appreciate how outstanding this game looks. From there, I found a nice merchant who sold me a few supplies that would help me in my endeavors against the Parade Master. And unfortunately for the Parade Master, I tried killing him multiple times and literally just kept running out of things. So I cheated a little bit and used a mod that would prevent my consumables from going down. And I cheesed him. Sorry, it was the only boss I had to do it to. And from there, I made my way into Hotel Krat, and then get a nice new shiny outfit, and I found a merchant that sold Legion Art magazines. From there, I made the other Krat policeman explode, which will never not be satisfying to do, and I fisted a donkey, and made my way to one of the first major bosses of the playthrough. This was the Scrapped Watchman, and unfortunately, this is another one that I had to cheat in, not because I used any mods or anything, but because I summoned somebody. Unfortunately, I just didn't have enough damage with the materials that I could get and farm for and buy, and so I had to pull in this guy just for him to do damage, not because the boss fight was too hard or anything. As you can see, I'm just wailing on this guy for the most part, and I finally ended up killing him. First couple attempts I had on this guy, I was pretty much able to kill him by myself, but would just run out of things entirely to use, so that was unfortunate, and that's why I had to summon in some jack ass and from there i cheesed the hell out of these shield guys if you're anything like me you absolutely hate these guys and they deserve everything that's coming to them and i ended up throwing like 90 of these cogs at this guy and i don't know what they're called so i'll just call them cogs or springs or whatever the hell then i saw some guy get run over by a giant ball and tried to kill these two assholes from there i found vaniti and made my way to the next boss fight this is another one unfortunately i had to summon somebody in but i do believe this is the last one that i had to cheat on so all the rest of the boss fights you will be seeing, I believe, are all just me versus the boss with no summons. And this boss honestly wasn't too bad. Like I said, the only problem I ran into was the fact that he literally took so many resources to kill that I just didn't have enough things to farm, I didn't have enough things to buy, and for that reason, I just could not kill him without somebody else doing a little bit of damage. I didn't need him for the distraction, but just a little bit of damage. From there, I got gangbanged into a corner, tried to roll out of it pathetically, and ended up dying anyway. And then I made my way into the Saint Whatever Library. From there, I cheesed the hell out of this big guy who always gives me a lot of trouble, and I just pulled him over to the door and killed him that way. And then we made our way to the next major boss fight. This one was not very difficult. Uh, as you can see, I'm literally just burning him alive. I genuinely feel like this is one of the easier bosses in the game. However, this did take me a few tries because, as you might have guessed, this guy was another boss where I was almost unable to kill him despite expending literally everything I had on trying to kill him. And I will say this boss fight made me nervous because at this point I was thinking that if I had to cheat again by summoning somebody and this playthrough was pretty much doomed. But we ended up killing him and getting the job done and he really wasn't that much of a problem. And he really didn't give me too much trouble. From there, this guy tried to send a bear at me and this guy was an absolute pushover. I mean, I rolled the shit out of this guy. He was literally nothing to me and my perfection. From there, I found these two assholes again, and they called me dumb. I then stepped in a bear trap that wasn't there and got laughed at, and then I made my way to the nearest red lobster. Upon getting inside of the red lobster, they unfortunately didn't have any biscuits for me, but they had the next best thing, a bunch of deadly bombs. Not sure if all red lobsters are like this, but this is my new favorite merchant, and the reason I'm going to be able to beat this playthrough. From there, I made my way to the Black Rabbit people. These guys I thought would be a lot more annoying, but this is a boss fight that I was actually able to kill on my first try. All these guys are dicks. I literally do not like this boss fight because these guys do like no damage to you, but they're just so annoying and in the way. The big guy's the only one that ever does any damage to you, and honestly, I just roll past him because all of his attacks are pretty choreographed and awful. This boss fight is just more annoying than anything, and I don't know what it is about that tall skinny guy with the spear, but I absolutely hate him. He is easily my least favorite one. I don't know what it is, but he just annoys the hell out of me. And honestly, I think the youngest one has an even more annoying moveset. After I killed that boss fight, I found a picture of Timothy Chalamet and made my way to the white lady. We danced for quite a while, but then things got weird when she accused me of killing her sister. I defeated her, but had to mute the section because there was music playing and I wasn't sure if it was going to be copyrighted or not. From there, I made my way past some obstacles and made it into this castle looking thing where a nice gentleman put on a great play for me. This is where I started fighting the King of Puppets. 
This is a boss fight that I honestly expected to be much harder. I pretty much used all of my electric bombs in the first half of the fight to just destroy that first robot and figured I'd deal with it later. This tends to be a strategy I use throughout a lot of the playthrough is to use just a few of my consumables and save a lot of them for the second half because usually the second half is much harder. But as you can see, I dodged this guy absolutely perfectly and he is really not a problem until I get flashbacks of Melania and he pulls out a waterfall dance. Uh, this is the most cheese move I've ever seen and it almost kills me. But regardless, I run out of things to use and do a quick swap. And I mean, look at how beautiful that is. I literally just narrowly escaped death. I mean, at this point, you literally can't deny it that I am the greatest Liza P player of all time. And I end up killing him on my first try again. From there, I made my way to the Lorenzini Arcade and I found a couple hooligans and I incited a riot. They started fighting each other, and then I killed the puppet and harpooned the carcass to the wall with some spare metal pipes that I had laying around. From there, I made my way to the Great Exhibition and got absolutely cheesed by this guy with an aimbot. And then, unfortunately, I got cheesed again after this robot did a lot of meth and started coming at me like an absolute crazy person. From there, I got uppercut by literally Mike Tyson himself, and then I realized it was just Victor. I haven't seen him since Fallout New Vegas, and honestly, he looks like shit. This boss fight overall was not too bad. It only took me about two tries, and the first try, I honestly shouldn't have even died but my health is not very high. Overall, this boss fight wasn't too bad. I'd say the only reason it even took me two tries was just because Victor has a lot of red attacks, and I'm not sure if you guys have noticed this by now or even thought about it, but you cannot dodge a red attack. You can only perfectly parry it. And for that reason, when this guy just spams 100 of them in a row, I have no way of stopping that from happening and no way of dodging it or getting out of the way. So he has a 100% chance to hit me when he spams these and pretty much kill me every single time. That's why right here he kicks me in the jaw, and I'm surprised I even got up from that. But regardless, I ended up killing him, and then he got speared into the next dimension. From there, I threw some perfect Tom Brady-like cluster grenades. And you guys gotta see the accuracy on these. I mean, it is absolutely impeccable. After that, I burned these carcasses until they died, because I had to get to the chest behind them, which contained a Legion Caliber. I then found a bear in the wild and tried to lead him into not one but two bear traps, and they both failed miserably. Not entirely sure how a bear trap fails to maim a bear or even stop him from doing anything to me, but I ended up eventually killing him and somehow he exploded into a lot of pieces. From there I found these dumbass baby puppets. These are another type of enemy that I absolutely loathe. This guy just kept grabbing me and throwing me around like a cheap whore. It was literally impossible to dodge this guy's grab attack and it pretty much pissed me off to no end. From there I had a very important conversation with Hugo. Love that man. And then I made my way into the Great Swamp to fight this guy. This guy was another major bane in the ass because I can't dodge red attacks and this guy is literally just full of them. He spams them at every angle and he almost killed me. I literally got trapped underneath this guy somehow. I mean, that is complete bullshit and literally almost died because of it. This is another boss, however, that I pulled a rabbit out of the hat and was able to kill in my first attempt. I'm not entirely sure how I managed to do this considering the fact that he pretty much every time he pulled a red attack, it was going to hit me, and he pulled them out constantly. But he seemed like he was very weak to fire, so I just burned the hell out of him. I pretty much burned this guy until I ran out of Legion magazines, and then I kept going. I actually also think that just for this playthrough, that the second phase was not as bad as the first one. This is pretty uncharacteristic of most boss fights, and this boss fight particularly, because the second phase of this boss fight is pretty much well known that it is infinitely more annoying and difficult than the first phase. And as you can see right here at the end, he actually does one of those red attacks that I'm able to run away from, and it gives me a great window to hit him with one last bomb to finish him off. But from there, I got the most useful and beloved amulet that I would get for the entire playthrough, and that was the amulet that allowed me to dodge fury attacks. So pretty much the rest of this playthrough was just going to be a cakewalk. From there, I found some kid who tried to lecture me about how the strong are going to stay on top. So I went Anakin Skywalker on him because he pissed me off. And after I got done fighting him, I made my way to the Collapse Street. This is what Krat used to look like, and now it's a shithole. I then stumbled upon the next enemy that I absolutely hated, and these were these guys that look drunk and just fall forward and do insane amounts of damage. After that, I made my way to the Walker of Illusion, and this boss fight was incredibly irritating. Um, the small room and the fact that I can't really get many attacks off very quickly was quite irritating. I had a lot of trouble on this boss on my first playthrough when I was using actual weapons, and it was just as bad on this playthrough because I felt like I had no time to attack or dodge 
the attacks that this man or woman, I'm not entirely sure, would throw at me, but it was incredibly irritating, and overall, I think this boss fight took me like three times, so this guy was a total pain in the ass, I absolutely hated this boss, and I still do. I then made my way to the Parade Master Part 2, and while I could talk about this guy, I just want to talk about my appreciation of my favorite item that I used throughout this playthrough, it is the Shot Put. There is probably few things in this world that are better than hitting someone directly in the teeth with a shot put in this game. It is so hilarious and funny, and it does so much stagger damage that I had so much fun with the shot put. It was easily my favorite item to use in the entire playthrough, and I absolutely loved it. If you guys haven't used the shot put, I definitely recommend you adding it into your build because it is magnificent. After that, I started fighting the Black Rabbit Brotherhood and their dead brother again. And this is where my strategy started to shine because I didn't use pretty much any of my throwables. I just kind of spammed my flamethrower. And this fight, the first half, like I said, these guys do absolutely no damage. You can see my health bar. It's literally, I haven't upgraded my health since the start of the game. So I have 12 vitality. And literally these guys would still take like 10 to 15 attacks just to kill me. So it's pretty much just more tedious work than anything. So all I did was burn them alive the entire time and just, I kept patience. And for the second half of the fight, when the big brother came around, I literally used every single one of my throwables and absolutely dogged this guy. I mean, I probably hit this guy with like 12 bombs in a row and he got absolutely pissed on. Like I said, I just wanted to make quick work of the second phase because that's the phase of pretty much every boss fight in Souls-like games history that gives people the most trouble. The second phase is always significantly harder than the first phase, and for that reason, I just wanted to get it over with as fast as possible and be as efficient and save all of my big hitting things for that guy. From there, I crash landed a submarine and it somehow landed on my head. And as you can see, we are now fighting the door guardian. Now, if you guys are familiar with this boss, if you've gotten this far in the game, you know that pretty much the only way to kill this guy is through staggers and fatal attacks. Now, what don't we have in this build? Yep, you guessed it, a weapon. No, but actually, we cannot do fatal attacks, and for that reason, this boss literally took me everything I had. I had to go back to one of the merchants and just collect a bunch of random useless things, get maxed out on literally everything. I did eventually end up killing him, thank god, and after that, I tried to make my way past one of these giant dog, bear, wolf things, and he knocked me off the ledge, and I fell about two feet and died instantly. After that, I tried fighting another one of these giant things and got third-partied by, you guessed it, one of these drunk guys again. I genuinely believe that there is a special place in hell for whoever created this enemy. After that, I ended up taking quite a large fall and tweaked my ankle just a little bit, and I probably fell to my death in this spot like five different times, but I would say the biggest bullshit out of the entire playthrough happened to me right here when I was on the elevator, and I thought I saw the way to get off the elevator, I thought we were at the top, so I tried to just kind of run at it, I tried to turn around and did this weird movement, and I somehow ended up falling underneath the elevator. Not entirely sure how that happened, but I fell to my death once again. I then found one of these baby puppets again, and he grabbed one of these guys without legs, twisted him around, and slammed him on the ground. I don't know why he did that, that didn't seem like a very fair fight, but regardless after that we made our way to laxatives, and this boss fight was incredibly irritating. This was the first boss fight that I think took me more than three tries, or maybe more than four tries. It was quite annoying because my health was so low, so she pretty much almost one-shot me with every single ability she did, but I used the same strategy that I was using before. I tried to save a lot of my throwables for the second half of the fight, and really just tried to use my legion arm for most of the first half. I did end up using just a few throwables, but overall this boss was so irritating that I just kind of had to and a big reason why this boss fight was a lot harder than I think it should have been was just because of the fact that I couldn't perfectly parry her lightning attacks and usually when you do that you take a lot of health off of her and it does a lot of damage to her but in my case it not only didn't do any damage to her but she was actually able to heal from the wounds that she previously had so that move literally was healing her instead of doing a lot of damage to her which in a normal playthrough would have so that made this fight significantly harder because the one thing they give you, the one pretty much opportunity they give you to do a lot of damage without taking a lot of damage, uh, I just did not have access to. But we finally ended up killing her and uh, the way I killed her was with my trusty shot put. She took a shot put right to the jaw and died. And once again, I just love the sound these things make when they hit someone right in the mouth. There's literally nothing better. After that, we made our way to Simon Manus. And this boss fight, this is actually the first time I was ever doing this boss fight on my main playthrough. I didn't even beat the guy. So this was my first attempt at ever doing this boss fight. This one was another boss fight that actually only took me one try. So my first attempt at ever 
trying to kill Manus, and I end up shitting on him. Not sure if I'm that excellent that I made this boss look easy. I know they actually just recently nerfed this boss, and I'm not entirely sure why. I probably should not be able to kill the final boss in the game in my first try, but you know what it is what it is. This guy was honestly a chump compared to the real Manus, if you guys are not familiar, but in Dark Souls 1, there was a real Manus, and that man was way, 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 way harder than this joke. But I did end up killing Manus. The second half of this fight was really not too bad. I'm actually a little bit upset that I never got the chance to fight Manus before he got nerfed. Because I'd be interested in seeing what was so difficult about him. Because I know a lot of people struggled on him and I know he was pretty difficult for a lot of different people. However, a lot of his attacks seemed incredibly choreographed. I mean, he would literally wind up his mace by like a quarter mile and swing it at you incredibly slowly. So the actual swings don't really seem too hard to get out of the way of. As long as you have a decent amount of stamina, you can dodge a lot of the spam attacks as well in the second half. And the giant AoE attack that he has and uses sometimes, like, there's such a long wind-up time on that attack as well, that you could just run away from it. You have more than enough time to get away from that attack, so I don't even know how much damage it does because I don't think I ever got hit by it. I could see maybe if you got hit by that one attack that disrupts you, and maybe you got insta-killed by that, and that's kind of bullshit, but for the most part... This boss fight did not seem hard to me, but again, I'm fighting a nerfed version, so who knows, maybe he was the hardest boss in the world before this, I'm not entirely sure, but for a final boss, he did seem kind of like a pussy, and overall, I, I ran through him on my first try ever. And I made my way down to talk to my pops. This guy ended up being a total dick. I refused to give him my heart, he got all pissed off at me and bent out of shape, and he sent this puppet after me while just heckling me the entire time. This guy heckled me for 10 minutes straight while he sent something to literally kill me, while telling me I was a useless puppet. Regardless, I actually think this fight took two tries, I think I died very quickly and very early in the first fight. In the second phase of this fight, I somehow chopped off his head even though I wasn't using anything. Must have been a swift karate chop right to the top of the head. But regardless, I saved a lot of my throwables for the second half and just tried to bombard him with them. Towards the end of the game, I also started using the acid canisters and then trying to lure enemies into them. I feel like I should have been using the strategy a lot earlier in the game because it does quite a bit of damage. And um, if you can actually lure people into them and they stand in it for a little bit, it does pretty much constant tick damage. Kind of like the damage you would see out of just holding your flamethrower legion arm down. And overall, if I ever did this again, I definitely think I would be using the canisters much more than I did in this playthrough. After that, I beat the boss fight, and even though this guy heckled me for 10 minutes straight, like I said, he jumped in and, and took a sword to the heart. Not sure why he did that, but after he literally gave his life for mine, he called me useless. So, I'm not entirely sure what kind of dynamic is going on here, but that's pretty much it for me today. If you guys enjoyed this video or found it helpful, make sure to drop a like. If you absolutely despise this video, make sure to drop a dislike, but that's pretty much it for me today. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.